G'day everyone. You'll never guess where we are. Well, maybe you will guess. We're down here at the Vic Park Community Garden Open Day. Nice little crowd. We'll have a look around the garden. We're going to give a bit of a talk to people later on. So, uh, yeah, let's go in. Get started. This is the passion fruit vine we're growing the seeds for, yeah. from. Yeah. So this is a, the Panama Gold. We got one of the passion fruit from here and uh, growing some of the seeds. What a beautiful garden. It is. Look at all this, isn't it? Wherever this is, it's doing well. and thoughts of Cyrus there because I am definitely no expert. Um, just a little bit of background. My working life has been as a professor of electrical engineering where I designed little computer boards and do really techie stuff. Um, and as I was sort of approaching the grey or no hair level um, and thought about retirement, I thought I've really got to do something that's interesting. Something that to me is worthwhile, something that's uh, good for the environment, good for myself, uh, particularly good for mental health, um, because I couldn't stand the thought of retiring and then having nothing to do. And I think that's probably what kills most people. So I've always been interested in gardening, but I'd never really had a great deal of time for it. And I thought, also, I've been a teacher for 30 years. So why not sort of combine this interest in gardening along with teaching, but more along the lines of that teaching and learning everyone talks about, or learning and teaching as they have rephrased it. Because I am no expert. I have probably made every single mistake in the book when it comes to home gardening. I've put things in the wrong place. I grow the wrong type of things at the wrong type of time of year. And I thought, well, when you go on YouTube or you watch Gardening Australia, which I do like, um, and look at these uh, gardeners that put up the videos, They've all got these perfect gardens. Their produce is superb and there's huge amounts of it. Everything's neat and tidy. There's not a weed in sight. I was like, well, that's really disappointing for me because mine's a mess. I've got weeds everywhere. The caterpillars just ate my cabbage again. And it really discourages people. So I thought, well, why not show people how I struggle and how I do things wrong and the stupid, stupid things I do, and have a bit of a laugh about it, stick up a YouTube channel, and other people can actually enjoy watching somebody not succeed or really celebrate when something goes right. You know, you get a strawberry, yeehaw! That's real gardening to me. That's how most people get by. Those really rare successes, they make it all worthwhile. And sometimes you have some really good stuff happen, like my crop of rhubarb. I've got five or six different varieties, no, seven varieties of rhubarb. And I discovered after eating rhubarb tart, rhubarb crumble, stewed rhubarb, rhubarb and apple, then back to rhubarb and uh, custard again and rhubarb tart, it actually makes a really good jam. And discovering these sort of things and what you can do with your produce from the garden is also really, really good fun. So I thought another part of the channel could be, well, I've actually succeeded in growing something. Now, what do I do with it? 
And what can I do with it that's actually healthy, tasty? Yeah, tasty more than healthy. I really don't care about the health, as you can probably tell. Um, and I thought, well, why don't we do a few things on what you can grow in your garden as a fumbling, bumbling old man? And what can you do with it when you get it inside, when you actually have a success? So a lot of it's been about what to do with all this produce that we hope to get and how you can turn it into something that's really worthwhile to eat. Things that you're not able to get normally. Now, anyone seen rhubarb jam in the shop? No, it's bloody delicious. It is a tart jam you can use with cheese or you can spread it on toast. And have a guess how many ingredients are in there. Three. Three, you gotta have lemon juice. Makes it really nice. So sugar, rhubarb, and uh, a lemon. All except the sugar you can grow yourself. Um, you can cut the sugar down if you don't like too much sugar and it actually is a lot better with less sugar. But you get a kilo of rhubarb, which is easy to grow, about three quarters or half a kilo of sugar, squeeze in a lemon, cook it for 15, 20 minutes, um, simmer it for another half hour or so, and it makes some of the best jam you've ever tasted. And these successes are really what makes it all worthwhile to me. Other things that we've tried uh, cooking up from the garden is fermenting food. Now, fermenting food is meant to be really, really good for you. It's meant to help the gut and uh, give you good gut health if you listen to that Dr. Mosley fella. Um, but the more important thing is, it actually tastes really, really nice. So fermenting up cabbage makes sauerkraut. That was nice, really nice. Then I thought, well, why not grow some radish, you know, the long daikon radish, and some of the wombok cabbages, uh, and a few chilies, which we all sort of grow, um, and ginger, shred it all up, and let it rot for a week or two or three. And you've got what I call curmudgeon kimchi, because it doesn't look like the real kimchi. And again, it's absolutely magnificent. And this is stuff that you've grown yourself, so you know what's in there. You've cooked it yourself, you've fermented it yourself, and there it is, this absolutely delicious product you end up with more than you can use, so I give away a lot. And that's also really rewarding to be able to give stuff to people, let them experience what you've been doing uh, and taste this wonderful food that they either like or don't like. Um, so my idea with the YouTube channel, and I've got some stickers for anyone who likes stickers, subscribe, like, press bells, do all kinds of funny YouTube things, um, is that it's, more or less about me, my mental health, my well-being when I go into retirement and enjoying life. And I think people who can join in that community, uh, come and chat with me on the YouTube, we'll all get something out of it. And it's really nice to actually hear back from people. I will talk a little bit about fruit trees uh, because they're one of my favourites and I've got to see you at some point. Um, I also like the rare fruit trees. I live on a small in a small house on an old-fashioned um, block just over in Eastwick Park there. It's about 12 metres wide and umpteen zillion metres long with a tiny little two-bedroom house on it, which means I have all this space to grow things. How many trees do you think I can fit on a normal Vic Park block? You can't answer. <laughs> Not quite there yet, but I haven't counted and I think I've got somewhere around 100 fruit trees mostly in pots uh, because I'm getting old and I don't want to reach up uh, and I don't want them taking over the entire space. But I've also probably got 20, 25 in the ground as well. And the way these are trimmed is exactly as Cyrus said, is that pinch pruning trimming. So you just keep them to the size you want them and they will grow nicely in a pot. You may not get a huge amount of fruit off them, but you do will get some. And if you have them in pots and you have lots and lots of different types, you get that variety. So I don't have a double up of any single fruit tree. Every one of my trees is different. Um, different varieties of the same sort, like I've got three or four different plums. Uh, I've got five or six different fruit, uh, citrus fruits. But they all fit. And it's also manageable, sort of. By keeping things in pots and arranging them in the areas that they're best suited, you can just walk out and give them a bit of a trip. Every now and again, I get home from work at five or six in the evening and I can go out and just trim a little bit back or pull a couple of weeds out. I also use almost purely raised beds so I can control the soil because the soil here can't be called soil. It's horrible. 
and it's almost impossible to build up long term. No matter what you do, it seems to wash away. You use a cassie's clay, cassius clay, I don't know what it's called, the clay. Um, you use the uh, soil builders, and I use a lot of green life soil stuff. Uh, give them a plug. Green life soil, good bunch. No, not sponsored, I just like their stuff. Um, and within a year or two, it's all gone, and you're back to this waterproof sand. So I found that building up um, the raised beds, and not little ones, but you know, reasonable height, using that Hugan culture where you put logs in the bottom, basically anything you've got floating around in the garden, you just chuck in there. Then you use some old potting mix and sand, and you only need about 300 mil of decent soil on top to really grow things well. And the rest is just the stuff you put out for your green collection. And slowly it rots down, you just keep topping it up and topping it up. Um, but it allows you to keep control over that soil. And that's really important because I'm sure Cyrus would tell us again, that the pH level of soil is critically important. And one of the things that I found is that when you go and buy your potting mix from Bunnings, uh, if you actually do a pH test on it, it's coming out so incredibly alkaline that it'll kill everything. So you've either got to use some sulfur or something else to uh, lower the pH or some manures and try and balance it. Um, <clears throat> so you've got to be fairly careful of that. But if you're building these raised beds up yourself, you don't necessarily have to use Bunnings type um, uh, soil to fill it. You can build your own soil up from sand and um, cocoa peat and cow and sheep manure and those sort of things. So it's really important to me anyway that we keep the soil controlled or in a controlled environment. I've had lost so many plants due to that cheap potting mix or even some of the expensive potting mix uh, that's just not been good for the plants. One of the major things I use to keep the soil in good condition is compost and uh, recycling of materials. Uh, very much into this and if you don't have a worm farm I really strongly recommend you think about getting one. They are great. Having, being able to tell people you have worms, it's good isn't it? You just watch your expression. Yes, uh, but they're really nice and they're, they're a great little pet. And I've got three earthworm farms that I run. Uh, they're just a standard three tier things that I've picked up from around the place. Uh, if you've got one of those Facebook groups uh, that does the giveaway stuff for your local area, join it. You'll pick up an earthworm farm for free. I have. Um, but all of your normal kitchen scraps, you know, carrot peelings and uh, things that are non-acidic, you throw them in there, the earthworms eat it. And what do you get back? This black gold, which absolutely magnificent for the, uh, for the garden. Not just for the nutrients, but also all the microbes and bacteria and good things that give you soil health. It's all in there, it's all naturally produced. So a couple of handfuls of that out under your plants, wonderful. And the proper uh, tubs don't attract rats, they're covered so uh, you can sort of avoid the infestations of uh, rodents and that sort of thing. You do get a few cockroaches, but hey, what's harming cockroaches? They don't eat much. If you don't like them, just don't look at them. They're right. Um, and also I keep uh, uh, three of those tumbling um, compost bins. And that's for things like the onions and things that are a little bit too acidic for the earthworms, grass clippings, leaves, you know, the smaller stuff. But that still doesn't help us with the larger bits and pieces that we have to get rid of. The large amount of weeds that we'll end up with, as we always end up with, um, tree prunings, um, just the bulk stuff people would normally put out on the uh, on the verge for the green collection. I built my own compost base and I salvaged some old pellets from uh, just around the place and you put sort of three pellets up against the fence and you throw all of your weeds, all of your trimmings, everything including stuff that's going to uh, cause a weed problem into these. When it rots down you move it from that one over to the next one. All of the weed seeds germinate so you then move it to the third one, and that kills that germination. They germinate again, you move them back, and that kills the seeds. And after a while, and it's a long while, you end up with this magnificent compost that's actually weed free. But it does take two or three years from first putting it in. So I recycle everything. I don't throw out weeds, I don't throw out scraps, I don't throw out paper, cardboard boxes, anything like that. Because if it can break down and go into the garden, I throw it in and let it break down and go into the garden. 
the only things, the food scraps we really throw out is probably the dairy and the, the meat. Um, and that generally when we throw that out, we throw it to Rufus the dog and he eats it, so it's fine. Uh, what else is it that we do? It's interesting. Um, really, that's, uh, that's about, about it. Um, as I said, I created a YouTube channel because it's fun. And if people want to create a YouTube channel, I'd recommend it. Don't ever do it for the money. Um, I can show you exactly how much money I've earned from it in the last six months. There you go. That's it. Nothing. How much do I think I'll ever earn with it? There we go. That much. Nothing. It's not the point. It is fun. It's great sharing your experiences. Um, I have this inbuilt problem from being a professor for 30 years. I have to stand in front of people and talk. If I don't do that, I think I'd get withdrawal symptoms. So it's a great thing for the family. The curmudgeon camera person's over there taking the, the pictures. Uh, Lady curmudgeon is down there smiling happily, eating the pawpaws that I just picked. Um, but it's a, it's a good time and that's why I'm doing it. I'd really like anyone here who's interested, jump on, have a bit of a chat, let me know what you're up to. Share some uh, pictures of your garden on the uh, Facebook page. Just join in, have a community, like here. It's a community garden, well we can have a virtual community. I invited everyone over to dinner when we did our mushrooms, but uh, it was virtual, so nobody turned up. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, terrible. I will also mention mushrooms now that I come back to think of it. The fun guy? The fun guy, yeah. <laughs> the fun guy is actually a business in WA who grows those kits, and they work really well. Um, mushrooms are another great thing to grow at home. They are really, really easy. If you don't buy LD kits or Bunnings kits, they never work. Well, they never work well. But by buying uh, grain spawn, watching a few videos from expert mushroom people, not me, you find out that growing um, oyster mushrooms, king oysters, shimejis, uh, and a whole wide range of other mushrooms is really, really simple. All you need is a plastic bucket to drill holes in, some uh, hot water or some builder's lime and water, uh, and time, and that's it. I've got some videos up on how to do it, but we ended up getting four kilos, four and a half kilos from two little 10 litre buckets of uh, uh, mushrooms that we grew. Um, so it's also good value. It's probably not that cheap, but it's good value. You walk outside, you pick your mushrooms, you take them inside and you cook them. And you know what's gone into them. You know who's been fiddling with them. You know there's no chemicals or other things on them. You don't even have to wash most of them if you grow them in buckets because they grow out the side of the bucket. There's no dirt, there's only straw inside. You can just pick them, chop them up and eat them. So you don't have to wash the flavour away. So anyway, that'll be it from me. Um, thanks very much for having me along. I'd really enjoy it if you jumped on and dropped me a line, dropped me a note. Let me know what you guys are up to. If there's anything you'd like me to find out for you. I'm actually not a bad researcher. Um, I have 200 and something academic papers published, of which none are on gardening. <laughs> so I'm an expert. Anyway, thanks very much everyone, um, and thanks for listening. I really enjoy interacting with the community garden. It's great to get out there with people. It shows that you can have a little bit of a, a gardening experience, even if you don't have a lot of land, or no land at all in fact. Have a look through these pictures. It shows really nice environment. It's great to get out in the sun and the weather and enjoy yourself. Bring the family down. Grow something. Once again, thanks guys for having me down. It was uh, really nice seeing you and look forward to having more to do with the garden. Well, that was uh, a fun morning. Enjoyed giving a little bit of a talk and I picked up some heirloom strawberry plants, which we'll put into our strawberry tower, I think. So join your community garden if you haven't got space at home. It's a good experience and it's a lovely thing to be doing on the weekends. Enjoy life, catch in the garden.